the Vita Resolve 17 has been released and there is a whole host of new features. In today's video, we're going to be going over a few quality of life changes and just a few things you may have missed from the conference. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so hopefully I'm going to be showing you a few things that you might not have seen yet, as well as a few things that of course you might know. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one is the support for fast playback review within a playback menu. So if you go up to the top here and you click playback, you can now see we have a fast review feature which enables you to basically skim through your video super quickly. So I'll show you, you have this. If you wanted to view back your video or your timeline really quickly, you now have support for fast review. Not only this, but you could also do this within the color page. So now we're in the color page, again, playback, fast review, and bang, you can quickly review your clips. Game changer. Okay, so number two, which is fairly obvious, this is the new and improved UI and also effects library view. So if we go to the effects library, you can see here that we have a beautiful new thumbnail view and oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this, not only this, but number three is the effect of preview effects, generators and titles in real time. So look, look at this, box blur, directional blur, look at, you can literally see your effects. I'm, this is insane to me, this is actually insane. And not just open effects, titles as well. Look, you can have a, a real preview of what your title is going to look like. And it's insane. Oh yeah, by the way, we have new titles. Insane. And finally, they're pretty good. Because before the titles were eh, satisfactory, mediocre. But now they're actually pretty good. Speaking of open effects, in fact, the next thing that we have is support for noise reduction. Yes, we finally have support for noise reduction as an open effect. I'm not too sure this might be a studio only feature, but the fact that you now have noise reduction that you can literally import into your scene without having to go to the color page, mind blowing. Ah, speaking of mind blowing, you see this inspector here? Yes, complete new overhaul. We have a complete new look. You can see we have a lot of new tabs here. We see we have effects tab, transition tab, image and file. So it's way easier, way simpler. And it's, it's just beautiful. Next, we have the ability to relink your media super fast. Say for example, you've changed your source folder files, you move some files across. You can see this icon right here is a relink media icon. So if you click onto this, it tells you that you're missing clips and where they used to be. You can literally do a complete disk search or locate the files and relink it super quickly, super fast, sensational. Okay, so now we're in a cut page and we have a brand new metadata view. So if I click onto this, bang! You can see we now have a metadata view which tells us all the information that we want from our camera to scene to take. In fact, you can press this icon here to show how you want it to be sorted. So if you wanted it to be sorted by camera, date, clip name, shot, scene, clip color, date modified. In fact, it's not only for the cut page, but you can also have this view within the edit page. So if we go to the edit page, you can see this icon right here. And again, we have the metadata view. So we have our cameras here. Everything that does not fit into these categories is placed at the top here. That is, that's pretty great to me. Speaking of metadata, you can actually edit the metadata within your inspector now, which is great. So say for example, I have this clip here. I can go to my file and you can see we have our metadata right here. I can literally change any of the information as I wish. So say for example, I want to make this, this scene here, camera B, and I want to make this scene here, which was shot in the same location, camera B. Now, if I go back to my media pool and I sort this by camera, you can see that we have camera B right here. It's literally sorted to camera A and camera B. Say for example, we have another scene, this scene here. I can change it again, camera B, and bang. Now we have, all the cameras from camera B. We can adjust real scene, good take, clip color, clip color. We can adjust the clip color. And by the way, you should see that it reflects real time in the timeline. So here we change the color of this clip. I'll do the same for this clip here. We can change it to, I don't know, blue. Again, it's changed the color in real time. Game changer. Next, we have scene cut detection, but directly within the edit page. Essentially, how scene cut detection works is imagine you have an edited clip. So say, for example, this clip here. Instead of you having to go individually and make cuts yourself, DaVinci Resolve will actually make the cuts for you. So let me show you how it works. What you need to do is drag your clip into the timeline and then mark an in and out point. Once you do that, go to timeline and then go all the way down to detect scene cuts. It might take a tiny bit of time, but as you can see, it's going through the clips and bang, just like that, you can see our clips are now cut exactly where the cuts were made in the video. And this is so incredible. This is mm, incredible, sensational. 
Next, we have the new 3D keyer. So if I drag this on top of my footage and I go to my effects library and type in 3D, you can see it says 3D keyer. So all I need to do is drag this over my video footage like so. I'm gonna close my effects library, open my inspector, navigate to effects, and I'm just gonna go down here and make sure it's open fusion effects overlay. So now, if I draw over my green screen footage and I click the spill, you can see, <laughs> you can see we've very, very quickly green screened out and keyed out our footage, which is pretty impressive. I'm gonna have a much longer video about this to see whether it's actually worth it, whether it's good or not. So stay tuned for that. Next, we have new transitions within the Ridge Resolve. Not only this, but you can also make your own custom transitions like this. So I actually have a video dedicated just towards transitions. So click the link in the description and you can go through and watch the whole thing. Next, we have the ability for in and out ranges to be synced across different pages. So say, for example, I'm in a cut page here and I want to make a in and out point, for example, in here. And I want it to cut just after this plant here goes into frame. So we're going to go, O. Oh. Now I'm not gonna drag this into my timeline. I'm gonna to go to my edit page. I'm gonna find the exact same clip in my media pool right here. And as you can see, the in and out point I specified, I play it back. So when a plant passes, bang, the in and out point has synced. It's literally the exact, exact same place that I placed the in and out point in the cut page. So all I can do now is if I wanted to, I can just drag it in. Simple as that. Super quick, super easy. Thank you. Okay, so now we're in the color page. I'm not too sure if this is 100% new, but it's something that I found out recently is the fact that you can preview your neighboring clips side by side. So all we need to do is press this button here, which is a split screen, and go from current view to neighboring clips. And here you can see all of the clips which are to the left and to the right of your video. And this is great for shot matching. So if you're trying to do shot matching, you want the colors to be similar across different videos of that same timeline, you'll be able to preview and see how well they match up. Pretty good if you ask me. Of course, there's this new color warper here, which looks like a snowflake or a spider web. I have a video dedicated to this, how it works, how you can use it, why I think it's kind of cool. So yeah, again, check the link in the description for that. Next, in the delivery page, you can see we have this new Twitter icon and we literally have the ability to upload directly to Twitter. I'm not sure how many of you are on Twitter, but this is a pretty neat feature, pretty handy. Okay, back to the inspector. Now you can see within the inspector in the video tab, we have an actual dedicated tab here for speed changes. So before the way you could do it was right click, go down to change clip duration or change clip speed, then you'll be presented with this option that you can change it to like 50%. If you wanted to ripple the sequence, ripple the sequence, change, and then bang, you can play it back and it's in slow-mo. Great, but now all you need to do is navigate to your inspector, bang, scroll down to speed change, adjust the change that you want, 50%, just like that is done. Incredible, super quick. Amazing. Ah, uh, speaking of inspector, we also have live font previews, finally. So say for example, I have my text right here and I just add a text right here. I'm gonna change the color so we can see it. Great, now if I go down to font family, you can see that we have the text changing in real time. We literally have live text previews, which is great. This is, I don't know why this wasn't in before, because before you literally had to click, click, click to see your changes, but now all you need to do is just scrub through it and you'll be able to see it in real time, which is fantastic if I say so myself. Look at this. That's insane. That is insane. The feature is all 17. Pretty powerful guys, I'm telling you. Okay, so staying on the topic of the inspector, you can now see that we have the ability to change our parameters of camera raw. So if you navigate to the inspector, if you shot any footage in raw, you can now see that we have an image tab right here. So if I click onto this and I decode using clip, you can now see I can change the ISO as I want. I can increase it, decrease it. I can change my white balance. I have literally all of the controls I would have as if I was in the color page. And this is super, super useful, like really, really useful. I can change my exposure, my tint, all of those controls I have right here within the inspector. Thank you. DaVinci Resolve 17. Okay, we're almost finished now. We now have a new way to sync and manage LUTs within DaVinci Resolve. So if you go to DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, General, you can now specify a LUT location folder or many LUT location folders. So if you're working on a collaborative project and you want to share LUTs across your same server, you can literally just put it into one folder, then go to LUTs, press refresh, then you'll be able to see your LUTs in real time update. 
But here are some of my lots, by the way, new lot pack, linked in description. You can get it 50% off. Look at this, this is incredible. Yep, so this is the new lot workflow with individual resource 70. And it's way faster than before because before you had to go through a bunch of new settings, you had to wait for it to update, but now it's super quick. And lastly, we have smart reframe. So for example, before when you're repurposing some of your clips, you've already made an edit and the client says, hey, we would like a Twitter version, Instagram version. You'd normally have to drag it into your timeline, open up the inspector, go to transform, make sure everything is like centralized and put in the middle and then play it back and see, okay, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Now you don't need to do that because there's an option called smart reframe. So essentially how this works is if you click reframe on, it will automatically start analyzing and reframing the clip. Not only this, it will automatically put keyframes in for you, which is insane. Now it's done. And if I play it back, you can see that our subject is still in the middle the whole time. Now, sometimes it is a computer. So of course it's going to get things wrong. And actually change object of interest and put a reference point. You can tell Resolve essentially where it should keep its focus. Yeah, I might have a dedicated video to this. But anyway, guys, the video is getting way too long. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like the video, please, please, please share, subscribe, comment, like. Let me know in the comments below your favorite feature. And I'm going to have a load more tutorials coming out soon. So I'll see you in the next video. Oh, don't forget to get my lap pack. Link in the description. Peace.